That's Secretary of State Mike Pompeo there ignoring a question about whether this migrant crisis undermines any of the moral authority of the United States. Now, Pompeo's predecessor as CIA director joins me now. John Brennan, thank you for being here. Your first time on the beat uh, during a period of, of real controversy in the United States. Uh, there's plenty of moral questions. We just covered some of them. Do you see a national security component or problem uh, to this Trump policy? Well, I certainly do, not just from a humanitarian standpoint. And that audio tape was just devastating. And just listening to that, it's heartbreaking. But in terms of how the world views the United States and our allies and partners who for so many years looked up to us as setting a standard for what is right, what is moral, what is the, the right thing to do for the world, uh, the fact that we now have an administration who seems to totally disregard that, I think it has tremendous implications for national security and reverberations around the globe. But the United States is not that standard bearer anymore. What position does it put public servants in who are still uh, duty bound to en enforce most orders? Well, it's very difficult for uh, individuals, and the, the issue along the border is really a tough one. When I was at the White House uh, during President Obama's first term, I was Homeland Security Advisor. These are not easy decisions, but the cruelty, the lack of empathy and compassion uh, of the policy that's coming down from Mr. Trump really makes it difficult for those uh, members of the Customs and Border Patrol, CBP, to be implementing policies that I'm sure many of them find reprehensible. So it really puts our public service Servants, our civil servants in a very difficult position, and I'm sure a lot of them have uh, tears uh, on their cheeks uh, right now. Would this be something a political appointee should resign over? I think somebody who is being asked to carry out something like this uh, that is cruel, that is inhuman, and there's just a continuation of this policy. I could see if they were trying to implement something and then they realized, my goodness, there are these consequences that we really have to stop. But the fact that they're sticking to their guns and they're digging their heels, I think these are things that uh, political appointees who, with a, the with a conscience and who really want to make a difference, uh, should give serious consideration to departing the government. Uh, you know a lot of things about a lot of things, uh, as the, the old saying might go. Uh, so I want to also get you on this new Bob Mueller filing. It talks about discovery that identifies individuals that the government believes, that's Mueller, are continuing to engage in interference operations like those charged uh, in the indictment, the idea that there's ongoing Russian interference. What is your view of the meaning of that? And when Bob Mueller says that, is he building a case, which we know means the most aggressive reading that prosecutors have, or would he be relying on the kind of intelligence that you used to oversee? Well, I think both. Uh, when I was director of CIA, uh, whenever we would get intelligence that had bearing on a counterintelligence investigation that the FBI had to pull the threads on, we would provide that information to the FBI. So I'm sure Bob Mueller, the special counsel's team, is now picking up things uh, on their own investigative leads, but also using whatever intelligence is available. And I don't for one minute think that the Russians are taking a back seat in terms of trying to influence the political uh, landscape here in the United States uh, through the electoral process. Uh, you are someone that uh, has quite a public record and a lot of public esteem and respect. Uh, you've also said things that, as you know, people criticize. I want to ask you about one of those, something you said on Morning Joe uh, that I, I based on what we know, maybe you can correct us, seems to be in the realm of speculation about what the Russians have or don't have on Donald Trump. Take a look. I think he's afraid of the president of Russia. Why? Um, well, I think one can speculate as to why, uh, that the Russians may have something on him personally. Is it a good idea or even proper for a, a former intelligence official such as yourself to, to speculate on that? What is the purpose of that if perhaps, in fact, the Russians don't have anything on the president? Well, I think I'm trying to explain a very puzzling phenomenon, which is Donald Trump playing a very fawning attitude and having this, um, this deferential role almost to Vladimir Putin, trying to explain it. And so, yes, I said that uh, you know, one can speculate uh, that the Russians may have something on him. Uh, as a former director of CIA, I'm not going to get into what I might have known at that time uh, that is classified, but I continue to just uh, underscore my puzzlement over why Mr. Trump continues to um, take steps that appear to try to uh, undermine the role of the special counsel in this investigation, that if he was uh, totally uh, innocent of any of these allegations uh, of involvement, that he would allow the special counsel to pursue uh, his investigation without any type of impediment. So I want to press you on that respectfully. If someone listens to you say that, which is very intriguing given the stakes, 
and someone has the interpretation that you may be trying to lawfully refer to something that's classified that is true without confirming it. I'm not lawfully referring to anything that might be true, but I don't, I'm not willing to reveal. I am just saying that it's unclear in my mind why Mr. Trump continues to uh, have this attitude toward Vladimir Putin and the Russians. Again, turning to another important topic you've been involved in, uh, the use of drones, which is something that gets almost no attention anymore, uh, but has been controversial. Reading here from a New York Times report just last week, President Trump has now oversaw not double, not triple, but five times as many lethal strikes in his first seven months in office as Obama did during a six-month a corollary. And that was controversial when you were involved in that. Um, walk us through whether they're getting this right, is it a problem if the numbers are up, or could that be justified? Because this is sort of a dark war that it appears we have very little public oversight on. Well, I don't know the facts here. I don't know what the conditions and circumstances are that the Trump administration is using the drone technology, which is remotely piloted aircraft, to actually put missiles and ordnance on targets. But President Obama was uh, very uh, adamant as far as making sure that we use that very powerful weapon of war in a very judicious fashion, and that we make sure that we have near certainty of no civilian casualties in the application of that weapon. And I don't know. my understanding based on some of the press reports is that high standard that um, existed during the Obama administration may in fact have been lowered. Let me ask it another way because I appreciate your precision. Would you apply that standard and easily end up on five times as many lethal strikes? I find that hard to believe. Uh, now, I know that there, uh, over the course of the last 17 months or so, there's been a lot of urban warfare yeah. in places like Mosul and Raqqa, and it's much more difficult to uh, carry out these types of strikes in areas where there are a large number of civilians. But the fact that if the reports are true that it's five times, I, th I think that it would be very, very difficult to apply the same standards uh, and have that many strikes. And that seems like a very important story as well, uh, given the fact that, as you allude to, there's a lot we don't know about it. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.